For years, scientists have been working to copy the best computer known to man, the human brain. People have always sought to design computers that excel at exact mathematical computations. Computers break problems down into discrete mathematical steps and rapidly solve these problems sequentially. This gives computers an obvious advantage when working with si simulations and calculations composed of exact steps, like simulating car crashes. However, as computers have advanced, they have been given less exact problems, like identifying human faces. These questions, which cannot be broken down into perfectly exact formulas, are significantly harder to accomplish for a computer, yet they are handled easily by the human brain. Years of technological development has created supercomputers and incredible processors that the human brain has developed for millions of years of evolution. The brain is, in some ways, a highly specialized system that can solve complex problems in an instant, but at the same time, it can be stymied by simplistic math operations. What is the human brain? Well, the brain is inside the skull and is the fattest organ in your body. On average, about 60% fat, actually. The average brain weighs about 3 pounds and is about 75% water. It can be divided into gray matter and white matter. It contains over 100 billion neurons, each with 1,000 to 10,000 synapses. Even with all these nerves, there isn't a single pain receptor in the brain. When you are born, your brain consists of almost everything you'll need for the rest of your life. Thinking biologically, the brain is an incredible feat, a constructed wonder. But what if we wanted to understand how the brain works on a technical level? What if we wanted to even recreate a brain? Every day, researchers and engineers create smarter and faster su supercomputers that mimic the brain. So now the question is, how do we go about reverse engineering the single most complex organ in the body? Generally, the idea is that if we can create artificial intelligence, then we have mastered the brain's systems and complexities. However, it is coming to many scientists and researchers' attention that a better method of understanding the brain is to map and try to recreate the human brain. This is a monumental task. Within the human brain, there are about 100 billion neurons, each connected to about 1,000 other neurons. In a typical computer, there are only two or three connections per transistor. The electrical impulses inside the human brain are extremely complex. Neurons can not only fire at different intensities, but they can also fire in sync with one another. Most people like to think that they are good at multitasking, which is a skill that the brain does quite well. This is because the brain is capable of processing multiple threads of data at the same time. Computers actually don't have the capability to multitask, and they do everything in a sequential order. This is achieved by switching from one task to another very quickly. In recent years, computers have been produced that contain multiple independent processors. This enables, to some degree, multitasking, but still leads to sta steep data volume limitations. Another hard part of recreating the brain is recreating the ability to learn. The human brain is constantly making new connections and branching out. In order for a machine to learn, it needs to be able to integrate information into existing processes. What, then, are the benefits of reverse engineering the brain? We can divide the possible applications into two categories, medical and artificial intelligence. If people could recreate the brain as a machine, what's to say we couldn't replace the parts? Many medical problems today result from simple miscommunications within the brain, or faulty equipment, so to say. For example, some people who suffer from blindness have retinas that cannot properly relay visual input to the brain. The concept of artificial retinas already exists. Similarly, we could fix deafness or fix broken communication with limbs. If, say, we need to replace a limb, such as an arm, we would want this arm device to be able to communicate with the brain normally. Any devices that replace a part of the brain's function can be called neural prostheses. The other category of applications could be considered forms of artificial intelligence. If we could redesign a supercomputer that challenged the capacity of the human brain, the possibilities are almost endless. Computers could define trends and use these trends to make increasingly educated guesses. One example of an attempt to reverse engineer the human brain lies in IBM's computer, Watson. Watson is a supercomputer designed by IBM to play Jeopardy, and it was first unveiled in 2011. Instead of attempting to mimic the structure of the brain, IBM tried to create a system capable of processing data and language in the same way as the brain. Instead of understanding keywords, Watson is designed to understand the entire question posed. Watson approaches questions in a novel way. First, it reads the question and attempts to figure out what is being asked based on the words and formatting used. Watson will then use different methods to create a list of possible answers and justifications for each. The most justifiable answer is presented as a solution. If the answer is correct, Watson will more strongly associate the method in question pairing. If it is wrong, Watson will weaken that association. By learning which methods work best with each question, Watson learns to identify the root question in each question and how to present an applicable and correct answer. Another instance of research into re-engineering the brain is the attempts made by Symbios at Stanford. Introduced in the fall of 2010, the project named Neuroprosthetics Dynamics aims to develop a prosthetic arm that can be directly controlled by the brain. 
The major goals can be outlined in two parts. Part one, map and model the motor cortex's communications to the arm. We must first be able to decode the brain's orders, then we can program the arm to interpret them as well. Part two, program the arm to automatically interpret body orientation and limb position after long periods of time. In other words, our arm should know its orientation and position relative to other body parts. For instance, when you move your hand right, you think move right, but the brain determines how to move all the joints to control the hand's motion. This research could greatly increase our understanding of how the brain communicates and functions. Re-engineering the brain is an incredibly difficult task, but the applications are endless. So, every day, we continue to map and reconstruct one of the most complicated machines in the world with the goal of improving ourselves and our creations. It is both the scope and the rewards that truly make reverse engineering the brain a grand challenge of engineering.